welcome. This is the Such a Sweetie bag that we're going to be sewing today. It's um, a cute little evening bag, or you could make it for a little girl too. It's uh, small and inky and uh, really quite cute. You can make it out of some beautiful evening fabrics if you like. This one is just made out of a basic quilting cotton. I've added a little bit of beaded trim along the top here and some pearls and this is what we're going to sew today. It, it has a chain so you can wear it over your shoulder, keep your hands free and this little piece of magic up here is an expanding gatefold purse frame. So when you pop up the top, oh, there we go, this part here expands out as if by magic, allowing you entry to your bag just here to keep all your little bits and pieces that you need for the evening. And then you can just whoop, pop that back up again, close the top, and there we go. So it's not too difficult to sew. Let's get started. So to make your such a sweetie little pouch you will need your pattern download and template with the cutting instructions. You'll need some fabrics, you can use one, two or three fabrics for this one. I'm just going to use two for mine. You'll also need a, a lightweight interfacing, this is just a generic lightweight apparel interfacing from my local store. Um, the, C, the little beads or pearls are optional as is any kind of trim or lace that you would like to add to your bag and you'll also need some plastic canvas and another thing that's optional but uh, you can use it if you like is an invisible thread. So let's get started. So let's start by preparing our pieces of fabric. You have a circle template just here and if you cut the circle around the outer line and then you can use that to cut the base of your bag and then if you take the outer circle off You'll have a smaller circle on the inside and you use that to cut the base for the lining. Now in, in real life it's not like the TARDIS, the inside of a bag is always smaller than the outside and therefore we're going to make our lining and the bag a little bit smaller so that it's not all kind of wrinkled and puckered. That's why we've got um, different sizes for the outer and the inner base of the bag. So you'll need to cut those two pieces and these have interfacing on. Then for your outer pieces I've got three pieces of fabric. This is the lower outer piece, this has interfacing. Then this is the contrast piece that's just going to fold over at the top of the bag. This one doesn't have interfacing, we need to leave that nice and lightweight so that it's not going to pucker up too badly when we close the, uh, the gate fold um, frame. And then this is the uh, lower part of the lining. The lower part of the lining again is slightly smaller. Remember we said that the inside of the bag is going to be smaller than the outside. So this one um, I've marked it with an L because this is my lining piece. It's slightly smaller than the others. Okay so now we can sew them all together. So we'll have them like this. My print isn't directional so I don't have to worry about that. But if your print is directional then this is the outer of the bag. This will be the base just here so your print would need to face in that direction. Then this is the contrast section of the bag which will be like this so bear that in mind if you have a directional print too and then this will be the lining so the lining of the bag will be like this, this will be the bottom so if they, again this, this is directional have it pointing towards the middle and you'll sew all three of these together here and here, this line here and this line here and sew those together with a quarter inch seam until you have three pieces all joined. Once the three pieces are joined together then you'll press these centre seam allowances both towards this centre piece in the middle and then if you take it back over to the machine and stitch through just here next to these seam lines just top stitch from the front side catching the seam allowances in your lines of top stitching. Now if you want to add any kind of trims or lace to your bag now is the time to do it. Just make sure that you're adding it to the outside. If you've done like I have with the lining is the same then the outer piece is the, the wider piece. So I've got this little bit of beaded trim. It also looks nice if you add a little bit of lace there or rickrack. But obviously if you are using beads like I am just make sure that the, um, the beads aren't going to catch in the seam allowance, you're not going to hit them with a needle. So I'm just going to pull a couple of these off at the end here just to make sure that I only end up um, just with a little bit of thread there in my seam allowance. And I'm just going to sew that along here just with a small 
zigzag sit stitch and uh, just give myself a little bit of extra pizzazz to my bag so if you want to add some lace or embellishment or maybe some kind of monogram or something on the front do that now so once you have any trim or lace or anything in place on the outside of the bag that you like it's now time to turn this into a tube so you fold it with the the two ends together like this and sew along this edge here with a half inch seam allowance you'll need to leave a gap in the lining just here so this is the the lower part the lining and we need to leave a gap open just here because we'll use that to turn the bag right side out later on so sew this seam here and press the seam open and our next step will be to add these bases to our bag. Now comes the slightly tricky part because we have a straight edge here and we have a circular piece here and we need to sew these two together. So if you've done like me, this is my lining, this is the smaller part so this is going to match with the smaller circle. This is the wider part so this matches with our wider circle. And if we open up the seam allowance just here and we need to match things right sides together. So we'll match our circle just here matching those raw edges and then as we go around you can actually make if it helps you can make some very small little snips in the edge of your fabric like this and this can help with it just a little bit but don't make them too big because our seam allowance is only going to be a quarter of an inch so at most you'd want to just do this like a, an eighth of an inch just a little few snips around this edge and that's just going to help our fabric give just that little bit and so it won't be so much like you're sewing something straight to something curved so I'll just carry on with a few more little snips in this edge that should do it so now we have our circle part here in the center and we're going to kind of pivot the circle and as you can see I've got just those little snips that give me a little bit of give just here so as I get to the next point in the circle I'll add a pin then I bring the circle up, I'm just going to pivot the fabric a little bit so that it just opens up to meet the edge. Um, carry on pinning and I'm going to do this very carefully all the way around making sure I add lots of pins and our circle should match the outside of this piece of fabric. Now obviously you're kind of easing the two pieces of fabric together here so in the, end, in the um, event that you do get to the end and you've got one which is still slightly smaller, slightly larger than the other, then you can adjust a little bit and just ease these two together. But they, um, they should hopefully be a pretty good match. It'll take you a little while. Just take your time, ease these two edges together and pin all the way around. And your straight edge will eventually mould until it goes round in a circle and meets the curved edge of this circle. So I'm going to carry on with my pinning for now and then I'll show you what it's like when I've got round to the end. So it took a little bit of fiddling and fussing but now you can see the circle has matched up neatly to this outside part and I've got plenty of pins to hold that in place. Now I'm going to do exactly the same for the other piece. Now the, um, the lining of our bag needs to be a bit smaller so you'll find that the circle on this one is smaller and you're going to need to gather in some of these bits of fabric. So you can just make a few little pleats as you go around. Um, and it will gather that lining into the bottom and you can pin as you go. Remember again to pin right sides together and if you start off at the kind of at the quarters so start here do the same match the other half of the circle over here and then over here maybe you make a little pleat again somewhere in the centre between those two, pin that to the centre of the circle this side and so on and then this one will also fit in here but you'll have just a couple of or three or four little pleats around the bottom of this lining, the, um, the, the straight area and that will just help you match, you see the extra lining here into the circle just with a few little pleats. That will make it a little bit neater on the inside of our bag to make the lining a bit smaller than the outside. 
Okay, so carry on with the pinning at the bottom too until it looks similar to this uh, top section. And then you'll need to take it over to the sewing machine and sew quite carefully because you have got a lot of pins. So lay it flat against the bed of the machine like this and you'll sew along here. Um, small little bit at a time just straighten in the circle as you go remember to remove the pins before you get to them and you'll only be able to sew like this with a quarter of an inch seam allowance here and also on this end with a quarter of an inch seam allowance so now I've got my tube of fabric sewn it's got the the outer end here which is smoothly sewn in and then the lining end which has the little pleats in it and I'm just going to go around the uh, seam on both sides and just snip now through the fabric layers of the seam allowance. Oh, I almost caught the bottom there. And I'm just clipping close up to the seam allowance, but obviously not all the way through so that it's gonna um, hit that line of stitching. And this is just gonna make our um, the bottom of the bag lay a little bit easier once we've turned it the white way round. So just trim all the way around the bottom and you can see immediately the bag starts to feel softer whereas before it was a little bit kind of stiff and uneven this will help it a bit nicer there and the same around the other end so I'll finish snipping and then I'm going to turn the bag the right side out through the gap that we've got in our lining Our next step is to take the plastic canvas, so cut it to um, the size according to your cutting directions. And then if you sew the two short ends together, I've just used uh, one of these whopping great big upholstery needles and some embroidery floss and just sewn these two ends together so that I've got a tube. And we're now going to pop this down inside the bag so we can squish it up and fold it and pop it down inside here. And when we push it out to the bottom of the bag, we can let it open up there we go and that's now going to sit in the bottom of our bag just here I need to just push it out a little bit more and that will give shape to our bag and hold it in its nice um, shape just like that and then we can pop the lining down inside so next thing to do is to just close this gap in the lining just here so um, while you've got a needle and thread out it may be nice to just hand stitch this gap in the lining here closed once you have the gap in the lining closed pop the lining down on the inside of the bag and just press it down so that it's uh, even and then if you um, take the seam that you have here and even it up with the other seam in the middle all the way around and then what you're aiming to do is have that this part here is exactly half of the the center section that you have there so it helps you even up the seams inside and out and then give this a nice press around the top edge and now we're going to match it to um, to our little purse frame so take your purse frame and if you're going to use some beads or little pearls you'll need those now and I'm also using an invisible thread it's like a very very fine fishing line and when you use it it really is invisible but if you don't have this you can just use a thread that is going to match and we'll um, sew our purse frame now onto the top of the bag here so now it's time to add the purse frame to the top of the bag. So I've opened up the bag and I've got the top neatly pressed. Here's the purse frame. So we need to open the frame until it's about the same size as our fabric. I'm going to squeeze that down so that it just about matches. So I'll match the, um, the little cap for the frame at the back just there where the seam allowance is and I'm going to use some clips to clip it in place because it seems to be easier than trying to use pins when you've got this metal frame here. I'm going to start there, check everything's still lining up, get it in pretty even if I can, pop in a few more clips and we just want the clips to catch the edge of the fabric so we don't want the fabric to come all the way up I'll show you in close up in a minute that the fabric only really needs to go um, just beyond the, the bottom 
um, the bottom little fold of the frame. So I'm going to continue to clip all the way around, make sure that the frame and the fabric are pretty even in size, because that's definitely going to help us. And the frame is going to go on the outside, fabric will be on the inside. Perfect. Okay, so that's now everything clipped in place and we're ready to sew. So I've got some little pearls I'm going to use on mine. I've also got this invisible thread and it's good, this thread, but if you look when it comes off of the spool, I don't know if you can see, it is just so, so curly. It curls up on itself really badly and so it can be quite difficult to sew with. What's going to make it even more difficult is obviously we've got all these traps around the top here where the thread is going to continually get caught. So you will need to exercise a little bit of patience and just keep this thread under control as you sew it. I've decided to use a long piece. It's going to be more difficult to keep the longer piece under control, um, but it's better, I think, than trying to join it if I run out. So I'm going to start, oh it doesn't really matter where you start, start anywhere and I'll come up through the fabric and through the hole in the bottom of my purse frame. Already my thread's starting to get caught, there we go, that's good. Then I'll add down a little pearl onto the needle, just that all the way back down, try and keep this thread under control. Where's the pearl? Oh, it's already there. And now, um, without going back through the pearl, I'm going to go again through the hole in the frame and out the other side, and I'm going to try and keep this thread under control as I do so. I've got it caught around the trim. There we go. If I bring that up to show you, now you can see where you have the little holes in the bottom of the purse frame, just here and we're going to be sewing the frame to the fabric just like that and the little pearl there is going to just provide a little decorative element and also it's going to provide um, so that when we come up through instead of going back down through exactly the same place we stitch we'll have the little pearl there and it's going to keep our stitches more secure. So once I've done um, one stitch here through the frame next I'm going to just do one between the frame and the next part of the frame so I'm going to do one stitch between and then pretty much go back down in exactly the same place. So I just have a very, very tiny invisible stitch on the front of the bag. Pull that through and then back up through the next hole in my frame. Try and keep this thread under control so it doesn't catch on everything. If you're using a regular thread, it will be easier add on a little pearl or a bead, back down through the hole in the frame, keep the thread under control. I've just got it caught around that clip so I can take that clip off now. And that's one more done. So if you look and see how far away I am sewing, I'm not, um, I haven't got the fabric right up here to the top of the frame. I have it around halfway. So it's just coming up. It doesn't even need to come as far as the little hinge there. As long as it's showing just a little bit above at the bottom, just here, then it's going to be fine. So it's going to be a bit laborious to watch me doing that. So I will now continue, try and keep this curly thread under control. And I'll do one little stitch in between the frame, then come up through the next hole, add a purl, go back down and continue all the way around until I get back to the beginning. Okay, so my sewing is completed. Actually, it wasn't too difficult, providing I went nice and slow and kept that curly uh, thread under control. It was good. So I've now got the top of the, the frames all sewn around the top of the bag. So now we can close it up and see how it looks. And like magic, that closes up nice and tight. And we can add, pop that down over the top. And the last thing to do is to just add our chain onto the sides. So I've got one of these chains with little clasps on. I can hook that on here. 
least I could, I should have my spectacles on. There we go. And our little purse is completed. So thank you very much for following along with me for this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed sewing this little uh, such a sweetie um, gatefold expanding purse. It's kind of a cute and unusual sort of project. Really lovely for an evening bag. So if you have something with a lovely embroidered fabric or a brocade or a satin or something with sequins or beaded, it's going to look really nice as a little evening bag. And you could just pop the top, expand it out and put all your goodies inside. So thank you very much for following along. Hope to see you over at So So Easy for some more sewing tutorials soon.